Hello, I'm Ellie for Edu for Java, and this is the tutorial number 10 of Java Game Programming. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about creating an executable Java file and what is a virtual Java machine. We will see how to create an executable file for a Java application, in particular for our game. A Java program needs a virtual machine to be executed. Below, we will explain what is a virtual Java machine and how it works. Why? A Java file is not like an Excel in Windows that we double click and it executes easily without having anything installed. In Windows, we can double click in a Java file and it executes because there is a virtual machine. A virtual machine is a program which executes in our machine. We need a virtual machine to execute our Java program, if it is packaged in a jar or not. I would like to talk to you about the Java virtual machine because we've been working with Eclipse and nobody knows what happens behind. What is the virtual machine? Where are the things executed? With this tutorial, I'm going to try to teach how things happen behind. Okay, let's begin with Java Virtual Machine, JVM. Before Java, we wrote a program in a high-level programming language like C or Pascal, and then we had to translate it to machine language with a compiler. The machine language or machine code is the language which the machine understands. A machine with Windows and a Mac of Apple talk different machine language. There are two different things here. The machines have different processors, and the machine language uses the operative system below. So, if we change the operative system, even using the same machine, we're going to have difference in the generated machine code. This is why we need a different compiler for each machine. A compiler is um, a translator between the high-level language and the machine with its operative system so that a program written in C could be executed in Windows, we have to compile it and obtain an exit, an executable in Windows. If we have a Linux, we have to compile it and obtain an executable in Linux. In the case of Java, when we use the compiler, we don't obtain machine code. We obtain a, call, a code called bytecode, which doesn't execute directly on a real machine. This bytecode can only execute on a virtual machine. A virtual machine is a program which works as if it was a machine. For each different operative system, there will be a specific virtual machine program. But the bytecode executed will be the same. What does this mean? If I do this program, I'm going to be able to execute it in Windows. Linux, because the bytecode is the, is the same for all of them. Okay, let's take a look at the graphic I've made. The program in C compiles. We need a Mac compiler. We generate a code understood by Mac, and the computer can execute that code. If we want to execute the same program in C on a 8086 Windows, we have to compile it. We generate the code, and this code is going to be able to execute in Windows. In a Java program, we compile and we and we generate a bytecode. This bytecode can be used in Mac and in Windows. This can be done if we have the Java virtual machine installed for Mac and for Windows. The famous sentence, write once, run anywhere, Wara is based in this idea. Okay, let's have a look at compilation and execution in Java. There are two installation versions for Java for each operative system, GRE and GDK. GRE, Java Runtime Environment, is a reduced version which contains the Java virtual machine, but doesn't include the Java compilator. GDK, Java Development Kit, contains the Java virtual machine. The Java compilator and other additional tools for the development of a Java application. If you want to develop, you need this. 
If you don't have the GDK version installed, you should install it to be able to continue with this tutorial. If, um, if we have the GDK installed, we have a directory with all the files which make up the Java platform. This directory is known as Java Home. In Windows, uh, there's a variable called Java Home, which points to this directory. Let's see what I have installed. Here, Java. Yeah, you can see I've got the GDK and the, G and the Java Runtime Environment. And inside the GDK, in bin, I've got to compile Java. Let's go back to the tutorial. Let's create a directory, a folder, test how. We create a file, hello world. Java we edit it and we copy the code inside We can see it's a simple program. We print hello world and we open a pop up window. Save. Let's open the command cmd cd to go back cd test java d. Let's compile now with this line here. Um, this is because of the class pass, so we're going to type with this line here. There it is, it has worked, let's see. Here we can see the hello world dot class, this is what we've done now, compile the dot java to dot class. Let's execute it now, we copy this line here. There it is, hello world, and we can see the pop-up. It works. Okay. A Java program is made up of several Java files and consequently several .class files. We also have the resources files as for example the sounds of our application. Java allows us to pack an application with all the files we've talked about before in a .jar file. We're going to see it now about the jar file. A jar file is a compressed file with a zip algorithm of compression, which can contain the .class files, which are generated from the compilation of .java files, which make up our application. The resources files, like the sound we did in the last tutorials, .wav. We can include the source code files .java, and we can have a configuration file um, manifest.mf inside a folder meta if to create an executable jar inside this manifest we have to write this line and always with an enter at the end or always remember to put a carriage return at the end let's try to create a jar file so that you can see it we come here, we create um, a folder meta -inf. and inside, inside the manifest.mf. We 
has to be uppercase, remember. We edit it with this sentence. And remember the garage return. It's important. If not, it doesn't work. Save. Now I come back here and I create a new zip called Test Java. I open it. This is because I'm using the test one. And I put inside the folder meta in and the hello world.class. We close it. We change this for dot jar and we come back here and we execute in this way. Here it is. It works. This is uh, very important to see how everything goes, but Eclipse does nearly all the work for us, unfortunately. If we go to the project in which we want to create an executable, we do right button, export, Java, runnable Java file, next. In the launch configuration, we're going to use the last one. In export destination, we write the name uh, when, where we want it. We select the same place as before. The name. And finish. Let's see if we've got it. We can see it here. We click it and see if it works. There you can see. It is very important you see how Java works behind. And this is what we've done in this tutorial. See you in the next one. Bye.